This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're concluding our discussion of the film trilogy by Ingmar Bergman, Spine 208, with these final two entries in that box. Number one, The Silence from 1963, Mm. directed by Ingmar Bergman, and the tagline for this film, RJ, Mm -hmm. Bergman at his most powerful, shocking, bold, all, all of those individually or all of them in combination with each other? We'll, we'll find out. Okay. okay. Traveling through an unnamed European country on the brink of war, sickly intellectual Esther, her sister Anna, and Anna's young son, Johan, check into a near-empty hotel. A mm-hmm. basic inability to communicate among the three seems only to worsen during their stay. Anna provokes her sister by enjoying a dalliance with a local man, while the boy, left to himself, has a series of enigmatic encounters that heighten the growing air of isolation. The what? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. So I've seen this film before, RJ. Oh, yeah. With with, with the rest of the films in the trilogy. Uh, Mm -hmm. I watched these three or four years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, my my star rating on Letterboxd uh, at the time looks like it was a four star affair. Wow! And so I was like, "Oh, cool!" I mean, that's pretty high considering I don't specifically remember very much about this movie four mm-hmm. years later. So, mm-hmm. while well, jumping into this, uh, it started to come back to me a bit by bit. Um, we, we open up with a scene inside of a train car with mm-hmm. our uh, the, the two sisters, the adult sisters, and uh, the younger sister, uh, her uh, young son, Johan. And they're having a sort of like, they have a, what seems like a kind of a strange, distant relationship. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't have like a real sisterly relationship. Maybe some relationships between sisters are like this, kind of distant. Sure. But they don't, they, they, at times you don't know what they are. Are they sisters? Are they friends? Perhaps lovers? It, it doesn't quite feel... Uh, like a really strong relationship one way or another, mm-hmm. except that there seems to be disdain. So maybe that's a strong relationship. Mm. And uh, yeah. I knew coming along though, that there was something about uh, a sequence involving tra- like, uh, something on the train and looking out the window and seeing toy train or toy tanks kind of marching along. And I always thought, always remember that being like this really, <laughs> kind of neat shot and uh this young boy looking out the window after and it's like oh look they're little toy tray or toy tanks <laughs> um mm-hmm. one after another and this kind of rear projection kind of thing and because they're marching into this like unknown european land and this seems to be kind of a, a european cinema thing there's like the Lars von Scherer movie uh europa uh, mm-hmm. that has the same kind of vibe um and then even when Wes Anderson does sort of a, a European film, like a Grand Budapest Hotel, there's uh, hotels, grandiose hotels, and trains. Mm-hmm. Uh, just in even like genre schlocky stuff from the 70s. Uh, tra- trains and hotels are bound and weird, weird RJ, as I'm sure you'll talk about sex stuff. What about hot dogs? Is there any of those? Uh, not so much on the hot dogs. Are you sure? Well, in the things I'm talking about. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's some weird sex stuff, but uh, I, I don't, I don't want to give you guys a hint at what I'm going to talk about here. <laughs> so why don't, you, uh, why don't you keep going? Okay. So they arrive in this, uh, as described, unnamed European country, which I believe is actually referred to as Tomoka. It's sure. just, But it's not any particular place. The language is... Kind of uses the traditional alphabet bit, but the words are nonsense. Lots of X's and C's and O's. Is it Eastern European? Hard to say. Are, are these the streets of uh, Sweden redressed? Who knows? Mm-hmm. But uh, they can understand uh, what the people are saying, and the people can understand them. Mm-hmm. The uh, Esther, the sister, she apparently is a translator by trade, um, and she mm-hmm. has and she has no idea what these people are saying. Which is interesting, mm-hmm. and uh, but she like one of her side uh, hustles here is going to be while she's uh, lying in bed, uh, terminally ill, sick, sickly it's... ill. It's it's never really 
She's sick. She's sick, and but, it's, it's taking. Yeah. And there's no like she's and she's staying sick. And it seems like mm-hmm. it's been something that's been going on for quite a long time, and it seems like it's really flared up since coming to this place. And so to give her time to rest, they have uh, holed up in this uh, this hotel in the middle mm-hmm. of this town uh, where tanks roll down streets in the middle of the night. There's a lot of uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Um, one, one of the things I was reading about the production element of this, I guess uh, Bergman's inspiration for this came from travels of his in post-war Europe. And this, I think, does feel like it could be any city anywhere in Europe in the like kind of imagination of a film goer who hasn't actually ever gone to these places. This did feel like it could be anywhere. And I mean, for me, like I'm not from Sweden or anything like that, but I feel like if I went You're anywhere, I, I know wild, right? Oh, weird. Uh, this could be any place, any country. It doesn't really mm-hmm. matter. It, it, the idea is that like you're in a place and you're kind of cut off and isolated. So on the flip side of this, we have the goings ons of Anna who is the, um, where, where Esther is sort of the reserve, quiet, uh, intellectual uh, mm-hmm. sister. Uh, Anna is the opposite of that, um, sort of buxom and w- uh, wanting uh, mm-hmm. and kind of resentful of her sister and this sort of like relationship where they're kind of stuck together. And I guess there's also this uh, element of her kind of being uh, shackled, I guess, t- with this son this child of hers that she has to like <laughs> kind of care for, but like kind of absentmindedly, like it's kind of like an adornment that she has that every mm-hmm. once in a while, it's like, Hey, rub, rub uh, wash my back. Come li- li- lie with me in bed. <laughs> and, uh, mm-hmm. just, just a little pal, mm-hmm. but when it's time to go out and walk those streets and, uh, see what sort of, uh, actions going down, what sort of attention she can get. She's like, see you later, kid. <laughs> have, have fun in the creepy hotel with the midgets. With the what, Jer? <laughs> the short people. Oh, okay. The little, yeah, I... the, the little European short people wandering okay. around. <laughs> Sure, if you say so. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, the there's some interesting reads of this film I was coming across. Uh, Woody Allen apparently thought that he viewed the movie as uh, Esther and Anna are the same person, and that's and it's like this sort of a uh, allegory, I guess, or uh, and then it's about one person and their like mental state of uh, sure. Which I don't know if like there's a lot of evidence to me. Uh, in the film about that, but it does kind of make sense in this sort of like very polarized view of these two women. It's something that mm-hmm. like you probably could imagine Woody Allen. Uh, maybe this is the way he draws up female characters. Because uh, then, mm-hmm. and then there's Johan, mm-hmm. the young boy who is watching this transpire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a. I mean, I guess you could make that assumption, but or like you could say that, but. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's just Woody Allen, like talking out of about himself, you know, perhaps maybe. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, so the movie, this movie is definitely the most peculiar of the three films, uh, through Mm -hmm. a glass darkly and winter light. I mean, winter light is extremely straightforward through Mm -hmm. a glass darkly, uh, still feels very much like a Bergman drama. This feels almost like an experimental art house film at times where uh, mm-hmm. there, there, there's like, it, it, but it has a naturalism to it. Um, sure. It's beautifully photographed and the it's, you're obviously watching like a story play out. Uh, there is like, there is a narrative, but it is like very much uh, a lot is left for the audience to kind of like plug in and fill in some of the elements of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think when I first watched this, I thought that was really exciting and interesting because I was like, wow, this is like feels more, I don't know, like feels more <laughs> like a David Lynch movie or like a, like a movie from like that the, the, the sort of stuff that like they start making in the 70s, mm-hmm. uh, the, like with like kind of weird vampire, like lesbian movies. This this feels more like that or like a, like a Just Franco movie rather than an Igmar Bergman movie. Mm-hmm. So, and I do believe that there is a couple things where he talked about, uh, for Bergman, a man who, uh, didn't really ever talk about sex really in his films Mm -hmm. or depict it. He starts, uh, he starts nailing that here. He he starts, uh, bringing that in. Uh, where does he say here? Uh, a quote here. 
He told oh, his good, close personal friend, Vilgot mm. Hulman, that mm-hmm. he converted the characters to female, because originally they're men, because he was afraid that the part was too close to himself. While Bergman said he was previously shy about sex in film, he decided on a more explicit approach in this film out of a desire for viewers to feel, to sense my films. Which one was he? The uh, the the real sexed up one or the, the dead one? Uh, probably the dying one. But maybe the other character would be the one that wants to uh, to go have an affair with a, a waiter, have, have an, you, a, have having a dalliance. I feel like he's all three. He's he's like the shut in. He's mm-hmm. the sex freak, and he's the little boy wandering the hotel drip. Right. Have you ever heard of uh, something well, so shocking? So I guess the original idea was uh, a throat infection distracted Bergman from developing a story idea for a fairy tale film about a princess and a devil. And during recovery, he conceived the idea of travelers visiting a foreign city. Initially, the two main characters were supposed to be male, which I am assuming they would not have a young boy with them or daughter. It would just be the two men. And Mm. then it developed and then flipped it around and probably just kind of went from there. Isn't that what uh, Pan's Labyrinth is about? (laughs) That exact same thing. Foreign cities? Yeah, a princess and a devil. Oh. And uh, mandrake roots? Sure. Sure. That's in this movie. Like, yeah. she's sick, right? Right. Yeah. So, uh, another thing to bring into this, because uh, we're kind of bringing up this so-called trilogy, which... Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, this, this ends well. Uh, again, all from our good, close, personal friends of Wikipedia. Bergman mm-hmm. writes, These three films deal with reduction. Through a glass darkly conquered certainty winter light penetrated certainty the silence god's silence the negative imprint therefore they constitute a trilogy he later retracted his claim the films form a trilogy (laughs) yeah i agree i mean only in only in title but this thing doesn't even really need to be called silence it could just be called like slut babies (laughs) <laughs> or something like or like yeah big, so big booty mamas or something it is a curious title the silence because like so because like, the previous two films there is like these like obvious moments of like the spider god and mm-hmm. the, the absence of uh god, of god. and the exi- silence existing yeah. in that world okay uh-huh. this film has nothing to do with that theme I don't no. think, I don't think at all. I think it is about I mean it's about like kind of um I guess the silence between people or between these uh wants and desires of these characters. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what it is. So I find it like a stretch. I th- I think to call this mm-hmm. a trilogy. It's like oh here's three films he made back to back there. But I I think honestly like, most people think about it that way too. No mm-hmm. one's going to be like trying to hammer home that there's anything more to it, but hey, I'm sure someone there, there's will. So, there's someone who's going to write that dissertation somewhere out there. on our. It'll be on our YouTube. Yeah, page. They'll, they'll, Some... they're, they're going to be real mad. They're going to. Be, you're all going to be mad. It's okay. Mm-hmm. No one cares. They say, well, actually, no one and then cares. they'll go into detail. Yeah, yeah nobody cares. No, yeah. I like the first two go pair well together. But yeah, other than the title, of this thing, I don't think there's any like. Yeah, there's they're quiet, and then in the next film, he talks about. He's like, yeah, I want to make more quiet movies, no. but like. I didn't think he meant like three that went together. I thought he just meant in general. You right. know? So, I mean, there, there's things though that I think create, uh, I'm not sure if they're necessarily the beginning of it, but these thorough lines of these really intense familial relationships, having these blowouts and confrontations mm-hmm. and like attacking each other on this sort of emotional, uh, psychic level where it's like, Hey, I'm going to fuck this guy now. And what do you think about that? And then she's like, oh, I still love you. She's like, fuck you. <laughs> I hate you so much. And I'm going to, this guy mm. is just going to start mauling me. He has no idea what we're saying because we don't even talk the same language, but it's not about that. Uh, and then she starts, yeah. So that happens. Banging on those uh, bed frames. And um, they yeah. were doing what, Jarrett? Banging. On. Is this the movie or is this you just talking? <laughs> this is the movie. It's hard. It's hard to d- discern which one is which. To be honest with yeah. you, people can't see the <laughs> the things coming out of you right now. It's right. um, it's unpleasant. Yeah, unpleasant. 
<laughs> but so, what, what what do you think about that? Like this, like because like, we see like I, I mean, I films, think like, everything you've Persona, said is Persona, Autumn Sonata, like we see these like really intense moments play out, and like when we see Esther uh, alone in the uh, in the bed, and she's mm-hmm. kind of uh, attempting this uh, monologue and talk, and then she starts gasping and choking off this cough. Like that seems like horrifying. Mm-hmm. And like she doesn't want to die because now she's being left behind. She's going to be. Uh, we're going to continue on. We can't wait here any longer. And uh, you'll get better. You can catch up with us later. I want to go free myself from you for a little while. Maybe that's it. It's hard to say. And uh, we have her like that. That seems grueling stuff. And then mm-hmm. and then we and then uh, yeah, she's like no one's around for her. <laughs> And then Johan and Anna take off the, the letter that Esther's written him that begins to Johan, words in a foreign language. Because in her time uh, that Esther spent here, she's been starting to translate uh, mm-hmm. the languages, the language, this whatever weirdo language that these people mm-hmm. speak. That he then Swedish? Re- <laughs> go- gobbledygook. Okay, yeah. And uh, he's, he's able to read this. She doesn't care. And... Uh, that it kind of ends on this ambiguous note. Another ambiguous note from these uh, three films. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you think the ambiguity is? What What's its purpose? Yeah, is it just to fuck with you? I think that it is a. I mean, if you take this thing as this idea that this the one side of the intellectual being able to understand their circumstance against the one that's like experiencing the world through a physical experience, I guess it like sure. lends itself that the intellectual is actually going to be able to explain itself. Mm-hmm. and be known and uh even if it's like this boy who like has a sort of a kind of a distant relationship to his aunt but also wants to console her and be near her and they're both vying for her for his attention the the letter is something that he can read and then he connects to and then the emotion has no interest in that whatsoever so i don't know it's i don't think there are there is an answer and, and hence the movie doesn't have an answer so it's silent yeah, it's going to continue being a uh, a silence of a, an absence, an absence of communication hmm. because it's frustrating. Hmm. So anyway, I find this a fascinating movie. <laughs> sure, uh, RJ. Tell me more. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know, RJ. What, what did you think of uh, the silence? You, the Silence, directed by Ingmar Pervman. Yes, as your yeah. little box review mentions. Hey, that thing's blowing up. People are outraged, not just by what I look like, but uh, about the hot takes that the people can't seem to handle. Um, I was blown back by the amount of gratuitous sexuality at display in this bad boy. <laughs> oh, why, why do you laugh? You, you, he, see, he doesn't. He's watching all these like weird sex things. Like, what did we talk about last week? That was you were just like, oh, I've had an interest in this, and I was like, oh. Do you remember we're, some kind of we were talking about the pornographers two weeks ago? Oh, maybe it was that. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. And you were talking about making your own doll. It was bizarre. <laughs> Any, anyways, maybe that was off air. So, uh, no, I don't actually think that um, Ingmar Bergman was a huge pervert. I think a little one, but who isn't, right? Who isn't? Am I right? Yeah, I was just surprised because, like, like in that quote itself, he was like, "Well, I didn't really do that." And he was like, "So I really spiced this one up," and I didn't realize that was coming. So when I when I just saw, you know, people straight slamming, I was like, whoa. I was like, this isn't what I've come to know in my Bergman <laughs> films. Uh, so I was a little bit surprised by that. Um, I think this movie has uh, some really charming parts to it. Uh, I think it's good. I think I still kind of like Winter Light the most. And I would put this one and um, Through a Glass Darkly kind of they're pretty pretty equal to me. Like all, all three of these movies, like we mentioned, they're not like a... I don't think they're actually that connected, but I think all three of them, they're all good movies. They're all good shows, and I think they're all right around the same bubble. Like, I think you could flip a coin for which which one someone is going to like the most and which one they're going to be like, ah, whatever. Um, I don't feel like that for any of them. Uh, there's some things that I like. Like, I like the little boy in his, like, Forrest Gump-esque, like, travels through the hotels. Uh, because I was like, didn't, like, isn't a lot of this stuff about him? Like, because I know Fanny and Alexander uh, is a whiles away. But, yeah. like, you know how that movie's about him? I kind of, when I was yeah, watching this. Yeah, no, you can't help but think that with yeah. this stuff. 
Yeah. So like whenever I see a little boy, I'm like, is that him? And uh, like he doesn't really there's nothing like too out of the realm of like things that could have possibly happened. It's like maybe he was a little boy in a hotel and he just came across a room full of like traveling performers that were also little people. Could have happened. Or maybe he could have saw this old dude slamming down like lettuce and hot dogs and uh, in like this corner of a room. Uh, it actually makes for like there's some pretty like like uh, striking images where it's just like this little boy like in these huge hallways or like yeah. against the wall. You're like, ooh, that's cool. Um, so I like uh, I like all the adventures. And then, yeah, he really gets the 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 short end of the stick where his mom's like, go uh, go to bed. We're having a nap. And he's like, you can tell he's just like, it's like the middle of the day. He's like, why would we have a nap right now? She's like, go to bed. Do it. And you're like, oh, she's that mom. I can, I see a little bit of a, a little bit of Woody Allen's like alleged theory. It's like, it could be one person. I don't think it's trying to be like that, but I could see like who are writing the story. It's like, they're two individual people, but it's, it's just like how say I feel in two different senses. It's like, okay. Uh, I relate more to the sickly one uh, who just like, she's got a lot of quotes about like, she's like, I really wish I could just die at home in my bed. And I, I was like, feel yeah. like most people probably watching Bergman films are going to relate to her. Mm -hmm. Which people relate to the other sister people like you. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And that's fine too. <laughs> nothing wrong with that yeah. uh yeah like i don't think she does anything like wild she like tells more like the worst thing is she's her just like uh not you know taking care of her kid so that's kind of a bummer but hey there's that old man at the hotel he'll uh he'll help you out mm -hmm. he'll, he'll fix him up uh what else was in this thing that i liked i really liked that guy eating the hot dog i thought that was funny i wrote my first I don't, I don't really take notes anymore. I just write down things I want to take screenshots of. But one thing I wrote apparently was the horse is unwell. I think there's a really like thin horse in this movie, like at the start, like it's pretty emaciated. And I was mm -hmm. like, Ooh man, it's like that horse ain't doing too well. What's going on? Berg. Get, get him some hay. Do you think p people ever called him Berg? The Berg? The Berg. It, Cause he's like, you see a little bit up top, but there's so much going on underneath. Do you get it? I think I, uh, I know. No. So, so anyways, I like the adventures of the little kid. Uh, you have some really nice images, uh, just him kind of like walking around. And the one that I really like is when he's looking at Hot Dog Man and uh, it cu cuts back to the little kid and it's just him like small and it's the huge wall. I was like, that's neat. I like that. Uh, I like Hot Dog Man. Um, and I do like I I do relate to kind of like what you brought up, uh, all the sibling, like, like squabbling a little bit. It's like, I, I have three siblings. Things weren't always hunky dory. There were some, uh, some pretty, uh, there were a few times, you know, not everyone got along all the time. Uh, was it to this extent where one person was dying and the other was out partying? Nah, but I mean, we had stuff similar to that. So I, I do see, I get that part of it. It's like, yeah, man, it's kind of like what having siblings are like. Sometimes they suck. Sometimes you're like, hey, get out of here. But then other times you're like, yeah, we're this is good. We're back to we're back to normal. <laughs> did you ever um, spy on your siblings like uh, the lady did in this movie? I don't. I, no. I realize now that that's a <laughs> bathtub thing, but I just meant in general. Did you ever fight with your sister, Jarrett? Um, not in any meaningful way. What about like physical or emotional? I mean, as adults or like, or any time in your, well, I'm sure, as, I'm sure as kids, life. everyone f fights because yeah. that's how kids are. Um, but as an adult, no, I, I think, I think we're on the same page, uh, yeah. as people for the most part. So, uh, it, it does not come up, but I do know, uh, other, other siblings, uh, relationships are not so easygoing as mine. Yeah. Uh, my family all get we all get along pretty good now. We all like each other, but N uh, now, <laughs> I, well, yeah. Uh, I mean, growing up, I was the youngest. They used to beat the shit out of me all the time, <laughs> or or they like, it, and that's what I mean. It wasn't even just physical. Like one time, and like my brother brings it up all the time because he's just like, yeah, and you're, he's like, you're a little little wiener about it. And I was like five years old, so I was like, of course. 
I think it was actually eight, but like one time he just like tied me to a chair and put me in the closet and put a, like a, uh, put a, a Jamaican flag over me and then left me there for like, like three hours. And I was like, I was like, that's not good. Wow. So yeah, that's pretty bad actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean like I, th- I thought it was pretty bad and he was like, Oh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> He's like, it wasn't that bad. He's like, look, it's made you better today. I was like, not really. I was like, I'm full of problems. I got a lot of things going on bad in there. My body's just rotting. <laughs> You've seen my diet. You know yeah. what's going on. And now you can't stop going to the washroom. I, I, I'm going right now. This isn't a chair. It's a toilet. Custom. Jesus. Anyways, what, what was I talking about? It's like a gamer chair. Yeah, it is. Uh, Yeah, so I like the sibling things. I'm not like... I understand like uh, the appeal to the story where it's like that that like loose carefree person that's like whatever I'm gonna do whatever I feel like it's like I'm gonna go have sex right now in this church because it's dirty. What do you think about that? I'm gonna go to the cabaret and there's gonna be some yeah. somebody some people uh, pounding. Yeah, and, you're, and it's like, what do you think about that? <laughs> and it's, like, it's the uh, European way. It is. It's bohemian, Jarrett. I um. I see why people include that in stories because there's a lot of people that are just like that. But uh, personally, I've never really un- like I don't do anything like that. So I don't even I can't even live vicariously through this lady because it's, watching it. I'm like, hmm, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so uh, my suspension of disbelief is just zero because it's like we're not sus- like, you know what I mean? Right? Right. I'm, I'm just like, it's not what I like. So right. I don't know when the story's like kind of rooted and it's. It's like, look at her. She's carefree. I'm like, well, she could maybe take care of her kid, you know. But, <laughs> but it's like I said, I know those those are just real people in the world. So it's like, what are you gonna do? Right. But and, I, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one one thing, another uh, thorough line here of some Bergman is, uh, no one ever wants for anything. You know, they've got all the money they want. They have like mm-hmm. a, they have resources to stay in hotels endlessly. Be like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, that's just how life is. Hmm. Is it though? No, no, it's not. But in in the world of uh, privilege and Bergman, which uh, mm-hmm. it just continues on, but no one cares about that because it's art. Well, Jared, art isn't real. It's not. I've told you many times. When are you going to figure this out? Mm-hmm. So, where do you rank this one? Is like, is it still your favorite? You mentioned that before all the rewatching. I find it the most interesting for me. I, yeah, I, that's like I said, like I said, it. it, it it kind of uh, reminds me of films that I like, uh, mm-hmm. I guess probably more uh, because they're, uh, yeah, they're more just direct, like kind of more, they have a little bit more genre elements where this is just very much is seated in kind of Bergman's uh, drama, drama, mm-hmm. dramaturgy, uh, yeah. his, his mode. And uh, I think he's done better films, mm-hmm. uh, I think, than all three of these films. But uh, I would say, I mean, I think as we, as we talked about last week, Winter Light's my least favorite just because of the subject matter. I just mm. I, I don't connect to as much. But yeah, they're mm. all three very well crafted movies, and I think I might I might still give this the edge, mm-hmm. possibly. But yep. uh, yeah, I mean they're all kind of uh, if they're they're things to recommend about them. Hey, you know it's kind of neat. What? You and me have like the opposite opinions, and look. We're not yelling at people on the internet. We're not yelling at each other that we're, your your ignorance is just blinding. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, we can get along. We'll, we'll see if uh, we can come together on the the final piece of the uh, this box set. I don't spine, think that'll be a problem. Spine to twelve. Ingmar mm. Bergman makes a movie released in 1963, directed by Vilgot Hjorman. Director of the I Am Curious Blue and Yellow films. Uh Uh-huh. The synopsis from Letterboxd. The year is 1961, and Igmar Bergman is making a movie. While planted on the scene as apprentice to Bergman, Vilgot Hjolman, director I Am Curious Yellow, 1967, Mm -hmm. suggests to Swedish television that they take the opportunity to record with the acclaimed director. In August, Hjolman and the television crew begin to capture what would become a comprehensive five-part documentary on the making of Winter Light, offering views of script development, set construction and lighting, rehearsals and editing, as well as intimate conversations with Bergman and members of his cast and crew. Footage from the film's Swedish premiere delivers immediate audience reactions and the critics' reviews the following day. 
So RJ, I've never seen this mm-hmm. before. Uh, oh, good. So I just want to throw a few things. Uh, number one, I love making of documentaries. Oh, we I, talked about it the last like three weeks in a yep, row. I, I love these things. Uh, yeah. They're, I don't know. It's a great, it's a great tool of finding, like learning about uh, how movies are made. Um, mm-hmm. So like, yeah, I've, a lot of my, some of my favorite documentaries are making of. I've never sure seen, I've never seen this before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was wondering why that is. And I think there's two things. Number one, uh, Ingmar Bergman is not one of my favorite directors by any sure. means at all. Like he's uh, Fanny and Alexander, I think is an incredible movie, incredible movie. And I mm-hmm. would definitely watch a making of, of that or, you mm-hmm. know what though, with that movie, I probably would just watch it again. Um, yeah. and which you'll have to eventually, eventually I will have to for sure. Mm-hmm. And the, the big thing though, I think is I don't find Igmar Bergman that interesting of a director. I, Mm -hmm. in fact, would say that the word boring (laughs) comes to mind when I, when I think of Bergman as a person, as a person, I I don't think he's a very interesting person. I mean, if you think about like the, the directors that have made good subjects, Werner Mm -hmm. Herzog, uh, let's Mm -hmm. see, Werner Herzog would be one, Francis Ford Coppola, uh, just going through my mind, David Lynch. Sure. Jodorowsky. Terry, oh, yeah, Terry, sure. Terry Gilliam. These mm-hmm. are people that like they're eccentric. They're fascinating people. You put them in front of a camera, and or uh, Miyazaki. Miyazaki is a great oh. like piece of uh, yeah. subject matter. Like he's just like he's always saying interesting things. He's very quotable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Ingmar Bergman. Nothing has ever suggested anywhere that this guy is like going to be like a a lively human being. He is a. Yeah. And this documentary shows he is a reserved Swedish man mm-hmm. who is very thoughtful, uh, clearly intelligent. And, but at the end of the day, does that make for a, an interesting subject? Just Ingmar Bergman, ta- Ingmar Bergman just talking. My, my, mm-hmm. my review, my one word thought here is ugh to describe my experience watching this <laughs> two and a half hour film which is in fact mm-hmm. five episodes that aired in 1963 which apparently was aimed at an audience uh of people who did not know how films were made which mm-hmm. is fair i could probably in 1962 or three they did not know very much about filmmaking and so this mm-hmm. idea of like going through the whole process of talking to a director not only a director but also for swedish television swedish sweden's like greatest film export they're mm-hmm. like this, like Igmar Bergman at this point was like a superstar and getting this opportunity to like get behind the camera and talk mm-hmm. to him in depth where the camera just constantly zooms <laughs> in and mm-hmm. out of his face over the mm-hmm. shoulder of Vilgot Hillman mm-hmm. um, for like a half hour. That's what, that's, sure. that, that's what happens. Um, sure it is. Maybe toward the end, you get a little bit of like costume fitting, uh, and just like talking about like the ideas of this of winter light, which again, mm-hmm. probably not my ideal subject matter film because it's like it was my least favorite of the trilogy. But hey, mm-hmm. a, a good documentary is a good documentary, and that this is not, I don't think, at all. <gasps> I, I think that shocking this is aged really badly because making of styles have evolved so much and they don't feel like they have to explain every single element. Like the second part of this, uh, Mm -hmm. filming part one is just goes through the entire process of blocking a scene for Mm -hmm. like a a half hour. It's just the same scene (laughs) going with the actors, shutting up the microphone, doing these rehearsals. And then Mm -hmm. on the first take, we got it. It's like, but it's not really the first day. It's like they did like 12 practices. It's like, Mm -hmm. But uh, this, it's just like, holy shit. And it looks like, <laughs> watching this off the DVD, it looks bad. Uh-huh. Like, it's very, like, the, the, the picture quality is muffled. It was like, whatever, probably 16 millimeter they shot on this. So it doesn't look great. And I, I think Vilgot Hulman is a, not a very good filmmaker. I think his sense of pacing and editing are terrible. Um, there's stuff in this that I was just, like, flabbergasted by where there's the scene where I think it's the beginning of the post-production. So this is the fourth part. They're showing like editing. And I'm like, I love 
the conversation of editing. Uh, one of my favorite books, The Conversation, mm-hmm. Michael Adonchi uh, interviewing Walter Murch. It's an entire mm-hmm. book about film editing. Awesome, yeah. awesome book. Watching this discussion where, <laughs> hey, we, we're doing a film. We could actually show you examples of the film of being cut and like what the differences are. No, what we're going to do is we're going to show <laughs> a little bit of that, but now we're going to show you Ingmar Bergman's head again because mm-hmm. this is literally talking heads. Over sure it is. and over and over and over again. And mm-hmm. holy shit, this, this thing killed me. I I I I uh-huh. couldn't I, I just couldn't believe how could you, like, did I, you do it in one sitting? No. No. Okay. I, I did this like three, four sittings. Yeah. I, I got her in two. Uh I tried to do it in all in the whole one, but uh well, time makes fools of us all, you know, Jer? Yeah. I uh I mean I have to say too, like I barely even finished this i once we got to the premiere and like audience reactions and stuff like that and like what do you think the mm-hmm. critics are going to think and what do you think of the, the critics and you're like yeah who care? Like, is, do we need a half hour discussion about how people are going to receive this i i don't know Vir- <sighs> no not at all like so the, my the one thing i come away from watching this mm-hmm. is uh his cinematographer sven uh Nyqu- nyquist amazing person so there's like a couple things in this where I'm like, holy shit, that's like that's all I want film. Where did that go? Does does anyone do this like in movies? Probably some people, but there's like the bit where yeah. they're talking about building the the church set, mm-hmm. and, I, and uh, there's a thing where it's like, so the cinematographer he went out to churches and he was doing like you know whatever Polaroids of the light in a space every ten minutes over the course of three hours, so he would know how to light it over the course of the period of time in which they're mm-hmm. in that first church in winter light. And I was like, fuck that attention to detail. <laughs> oh, I want it so bad because now we just color correct everything and everything looks the same. No one cares what time of day it is. No one mm-hmm. cares. No one knows if it's like 7 a.m., 4 p.m., 7 p.m., what time of year it is. No one cares. These guys cared. They thought about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brett Ratner might be checking oh, lightning. Oh, I'm sure lighting. he does. He's, he seems like a kind of guy who's uh, got his finger on the pulse and checking out that fine, fine detail. And even when they're in the um, the like little film booth, kind of like testing out the footage, projecting on the screen just to see how the editing is going, they have a guy go up to the screen to do a light metering of the wall to make sure that the projection of the light is similar to how it's going to be projected in a theater. Mm-hmm. This just made me laugh because when I go to the theater, the, the movie's like, dark underlit looks like shit and people are like these theaters are charging like you know premium money for b- badly projected films just like mm-hmm. this idea that someone's going through all this effort to make sure that the light and exposures are all proper oh well my heart is my heart is that what you would do if i was a cinematographer yeah yeah i'd just probably wing it <laughs> I'm sure Roger Deakins thinks this way about like everything he does from crap to the uh, highest up. I'm sure. Like, I, I bet he wings it too. Right. But I mean, I don't know if there's a reward for being this thorough, especially nowadays. Mm. Well, I don't know. The, uh, the only guy I know who does it would maybe be Yui Bell and uh, he gets rewarded pretty, pretty frequently. Yeah. Yui Ball. What's that guy's name? Uve. Uve. Uve Ball. Um, so anyway, yeah, so, so you're th- telling me you liked it. This hey? was, this was a wash. This is, uh, definitely, uh, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm trying to think back to that Carl Theodore Dreyer documentary, which was yep. just dull. That at least was not this long. Well, so what we've noticed, we've noticed a little streak here, Jer. Yeah. These, uh, these ma- things are ma- made for TV, uh, making of documentaries and the criterion mm-hmm. spine numbers. Not, not, not a good thing. This is what you would put in the supplements. And yes. someone who would actually go to Winter Light and say, oh, a two and a half hour documentary on the making of in supplements, you know it, then sure. But right. yeah, when it's actually the spine number, it's like we said, where we kind of split it up. You're like, it'll stand on its own. And it's like, well, if it doesn't, maybe there's an issue with Criterion. And you know what, Jared? Maybe there's an issue with Criterion. Maybe they just made a mistake and it was... This shouldn't have been a whole nut number on its own. It should just be supplements, my man. And, and if supplemental, it also supplements. means skippable for our discussion. Skippable supplements, my man. 
so I, I know you really liked it. Uh, <laughs> I thought there were some, uh, some funny things. A lot of screenshots about Ingmar Bergman talking about his agony and his loneliness <laughs> and how everything makes him mad. And I was like, I, I relate to you, old Berg. Yeah. I was like, I see where this is like shining through on your stuff. I get it. That's not, that's nice. Uh, and then like there were things that I was watching this and I was like, man, this shouldn't be in here. Maybe it should. Like when they're just venting about actors, they're like, oh, actors are the fucking worst. They're like, you got to like, you got to like cater them like this and you got to spell it out like that. And it's Bergman and that other, that Swedish guy or whatever, or whatever he is. And they're just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're just kind of like talking back and forth. They're like, fucking actors the worst <laughs> it's like i'm sure that's true but like <laughs> should you be saying that but then you do see like so you know the priest gunner i liked him in these movies and then watching him in this i was like this guy's kind of an asshole mm-hmm. he comes off like that you're like this guy's kind of a dink he's like maybe he is a re- me i can see why berg is like venting about this guy and then he's talking about his thick, virile eyebrows, which is an <laughs> actual quote. And I was like, "Ugh!" I was like, why? Um, so that guy was a bummer. But you know who was wicked was that uh, that stagehand. Oh, the yeah. Guy, the, that, the, the prop master. Was it uh, the, the Mozart or the Beethoven? I can't remember. Oh, that guy is awesome. And he's just like walking around and they're like, what happened? He's like, I just got this rare disease disorder, well, man. See, and that's the thing. So they explained that in this documentary yeah. winter, like, but in winter light, they don't mention it at all. Like what, why he's moving like that. You know what I think that is, Jer? What? I think at any given time, any kind of church is just going to have people who have club. You, you just, you just assume like hunchback and Notre Dame Quasimodo's types are just present wow. at okay. all times. Wow. Hey, 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 that's what I'm taking from this criterion collection approved movie. <laughs> Cause it like, that's, that's what they did. Right. You're like, mm-hmm. you can just assume that they're there. So there, you don't need an answer in winter light is what right. I'm saying. But I liked him in this, in the documentary because He's just telling you his thing. They're like, is it hard to work? He's like, yeah. He's like, it sucks. He's like, my life is agony, but my job is cool. He's like, so I like like coming to work. And you're like, man, what a weird dude. I got to – so there is a scene in this, and I, I don't think it's just my watching. But uh, did you watch this on the Criterion channel or on DVD? On, on my DVD, yeah. Okay. At 1 hour 42 – minutes and 20 seconds there is a huge screech like an audio yes like, oh you and know I was, what because i, was I, like, what I the didn't fuck is that I, I didn't watch it all on my dvd though i did watch okay. some of it on the channel because I, I watched it at lunch hour uh yeah and i did i there was yeah there's horrible screech while during an interview and i went what the fuck well yeah because like i was like watching and it just like it like it shocked me because it was so loud and like out of nowhere. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And like, it was very clearly, I was like, that's in this. That's not like something that happened in my world or my TV or something. I was like, why would they leave this? Like, I guess they didn't like, they wanted whatever was there. They didn't edit it out. But I was like, Oh, I always assume it's like one of those weird, like uh, anti copyright things (laughs) or like fighting, like, uh, yeah, throw it in there. So if someone illegally downloaded this uh, snooze fest, uh, they'd be like, aha, (laughs) you can't pirate this crap. They're like, we caught you. You have the screech. Yep. But it's just in the criterion thing. And it's like, Oh yeah. I don't know if it's on the DVD actually, but you know what? I'm, I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> you're not going to go and check to double up? No. No. Well, I, I, you know, I've heard of unprofessionalism before, Jared, but uh, never, never in my life. What's going on over there? Oh, I just seen if I had these on the right ears. Okay. I, di- I didn't think you would notice. <laughs> good, good at what, hour two. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to report I have left and right lined up. Just right. Outstanding. So, anyways, uh, this is a weird thing, and it's like it's like you said, we do it, but I really hope no one else watches this thing. Yeah, this is a. Uh, it's very me, skippable. Very to me, it, unless you are like if you're writing on Ingmar Bergman or are a huge Ingmar Bergman fan, mm-hmm. check it out. But like, I honestly, I would, I would 100% prefer to read this interview. Like any of this interview stuff, I'd rather read yeah. it than watch it. To me, it's just it's so slow and. 
bad. Like you would not, you would, most of the stuff you would cut out at this point. Like, cause most people know how this works. Um, it would, yeah, it mm-hmm. translates every, in every way. I think it's just aged badly. I think, um, more than probably anything else. So watching it now, I just find it. Yeah. There's so many better mm-hmm. examples of this genre that exists. I guess this is the only one that's going to exist for winter light, but I'm sure that there's like probably a dozen videos that people have made on Imar Bergman on YouTube that are better than this. That have like oh. great insights or thoughts. Then that, that this has nothing. It's like very like I don't know. There's like no great insights. Like the discussions about the movies is kind of like it, it's there, but man, mm-hmm. I don't know. I I'm, would I'm, say I'm so not impressed by uh, Vilgot uh, as a uh, as anything. Person? This launched his career, I suppose. That's when he cause uh. he made this, and so he became because uh, he got he got the Bergman rub, as they say, mm-hmm. as someone the, said. The what? The uh, the Bergman rub. Who said that? Me. I said it. Oh, I don't like that, Jared. That, this movie's got an interesting poster. Liglika Skitar. It's got a man's laughing face with a girl's butt. Um, with a what? Girl's butt. She's wearing like a rat, like a bunny suit, like a little puff cotton tail just above uh, her butt crack. Yeah. It's interesting. Cool. It looks classy. Interesting, Jared. Very interesting. Uh, what was I talking about? I don't know. Yeah, this thing's like, like know. you said, if you were really into it, go for it, man. I bet you'll, like, I got some good screenshots out of it. I didn't think it was all, like, oh, yeah, there's some the, of the, there's the one there's I sent you that I, that, uh, I got that I think encapsulated it all very nicely. Which mm-hmm. one was that, though? You could have put that on the Instagram. Oh, I could have. But yeah, you, I mean, you ignored my gold. Let's see. You, you still can. Bar. Bear with me here. We send each other so many things. That's a big, heavy, dead mass of film. Well, let's see. Let's see how many how many likes my hot my hot dog picture only has two likes. Wow. One of them is from me. So why don't we delete it and we'll put yours up there? Okay. I can I can repurpose this hot dog picture. Perfect. Do yeah. over. Do over. Uh, you want to find out who hates this the silence and this yeah what the hell making a movie okay. Uh, first up, we have Murtada Abbas. One star for the silence. Mm-hmm. Sure, it's visually intriguing, but with no characters to relate to and no interesting story, all it amounts to is a slow-moving film better off discussed than endured. See it once if you're a fan of Igmar Bergman. However, if you've never even heard of the man, don't start with this one. Would Do you think that there's actually people out there that are starting with this one? I hope not. I don't know how that would happen. I'm pretty sure yeah. uh, Seventh Seal would be the go-to. Yeah, like Probably I don't... 90% of the time. For a second there, I thought you were talking about um, Ingmar Bergman makes a movie. Oh, and I was shit. like, well, yeah, no shit. Don't start with that one. Uh, okay, what is uh, Murtada? Uh, here's his their favorite films. Au revoir, Les Enfants. Okay. Diary a little bit of, of Louis Maul. Diary of a Country Priest. That's coming up uh, in like a month or so for us. Yeah, yeah real soon. Andre Rublev. And then something called Close Up from 1990. That's some, Is that a good film? Uh, yes. Uh, let's look at some other five-star films. Yeah, some good stuff. That's all Criterion of, so f- at this point. Yeah, everything else is Criterion's too, except for maybe Manchester by the Sea and The Irishman for five stars. Well, future Ooh. Criterion. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, yeah. Hey, how about that just being like unceremoniously dumped on Netflix's Twitter account? It's like these are gone comments as a Criterion collection. Sometime this year. Yeah, like they kind of took the wind out of the sails. Hey, here's some interesting things about Murtaugh. Uh Half Star Films, The Green Mile, The Lady of Shanghai, Man on Fire, 500 Days of Summer, RoboCop. Oh. No, Oof. no thank you, Jarrett. No thank you. Uh, next up, we have Beatrice Folk. Beatrice. One star. Nice. It's a bit boring, or maybe I'm too young to watch this film. That was from uh, like 2014, so like almost mm-hmm. six years ago. And they were using Letterboxd in 2014? Yep. Hey, good for them. Well, maybe they should rewatch it. They're six years older. I don't know. Maybe they should rewatch Green Book, the movie they gave five stars. Or what about Crash? Another movie they gave five stars. Ooh. What about Sid and Nancy? A movie they gave five stars. I see. What? 
uh like there's actual good movies in here but like chronicle mm, five stars nah uh, let's go to these half stars dumb and dumber two okay like mike i mean it's not great but it's just a kid's movie titanic two yeah there's nothing of, nothing of quality okay here all right you know? and ingmar bergman makes a movie there are no one stars there are no two stars only great. three great Let's Ro- hear him. robert hilton criterion blu-ray documentary on the making of winter light much valuable information is imparted on all aspects of production <laughs> I mean, that's about as clinical as it gets. Yeah. You know? Uh, Criterion person, seven favorite film, Seven Samurai, Macbeth, Wages of Fear, With Nail and I. Although they just gave The Exorcist 3 two and a half stars, which mm. is not a very good take. And then, uh, fuck, this person doesn't have a lot of movies rated. Nothing really. Okay. I don't know. They gave Ghostbusters 2 one star. I don't think that's fair. Uh, and we'll go finally here with Amy, three stars. Okay. Interesting doc if you're obsessed with Bergman. I especially like the short discussion about cuts and editing. Very oh. long, though. <laughs> Just like you, hey? Yeah. So, Amy, these are all criterion. I mean, who who would watch this if they weren't? Lost Highway, 2001, Mirror. They just gave Midsommar four and a half stars. Mm. It's not great. Uh, what else we got here? Criterion things, Clute, five stars. That's very good. Hey, look, Mar- Marriage of Maria Braun and Veronica Voss, five stars. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Okay, let's go to these one stars. Weird. Uh, Baby Brother, don't know what that is. Black Panther. And then Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, one star. Huh. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. I don't know who these people are, Jared. I don't know. You know what I mean? You know (laughs) what I mean, man? It's true. I understand. Uh, So, yeah. uh, What what did you think of Igmar Makes a Movie? Oh, I mean. Was it it boring for you? Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to watch this thing either. Uh, There were some of the quotes. Like, I don't know. Some of the things he was talking about. I was like, that's kind of neat. I like hearing him talk about these things. It's just it's way too long. And there's so much stuff in there that I don't want to hear about. Well, it's an hour longer than Winter Light. Yeah. Which, I mean, there's the uh, one making of documentary for Devil's Rejects that is as long as this. But it is very contemporary and feels a little bit more... um, I don't know. It just, for modern taste, it makes way more sense to present making of stuff in that way. This doesn't have that sort of like lived in element or fuck like the, the trauma making ofs are so much better (laughs) and, Mm. and that's trauma. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Like get out, get the fuck out of here. Human. Uh, well, you think those trauma ones are better, but I've never seen them. I can't validate that. Yeah. Well, anyways, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but what are you going to do? As we've said many times, just because it's in the spine spine numbers doesn't mean it's it's good. It's true. You know. Well, that's it. We did it. That's Another it. box set back mm-hmm. on back on the shelf. Mm-hmm. After the break, we're uh, we're going to make a behind the scenes documentary about the making of this episode. It's it's going to suck. It's just going to be you doing all those weird sex things. <laughs> <laughs> 